Around 20 years ago, most of Texas, well, the number one supplier of electricity in Texas was coal power. However, that has fallen to only 13% in 2023, and I believe around 11.5% in 2024. But with the closure of yet another coal power plant in Texas, that number will fall to below 10% within the next few years. And this signals really one major advent in Texas, the decline and the eventual death of coal power. What's replacing it? What's going to save the day for the Texas power grid? Well, it's a combination of renewables. It's wind, it's batteries, and solar. New research has revealed that the number one source of energy in the United States in three to four years' time will be renewables. Renewables will be in first place and overtake gas. It's not nuclear, guys. I realize that Americans are, you know, a lot of Americans think the answer is nuclear, but actually, renewables are going to smash everything else within the next four years. It's happening one power plant at a time. There is a coal power plant in Texas, which is one of the most polluting power plants in America. I should mention, if you don't know this, there was a 22-year study done in the US that revealed approximately 20 million Americans died prematurely because they were breathing in coal dust. Because they live within a 100-mile radius of a coal power plant, and then these people didn't realize, that was actually killing them. Now, a coal power plant is being, well, it's being replaced with solar panels and a battery. And this is happening in Texas. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'll put a link in the description to our member page. That's the best way you can support the channel. If you can click that link and become a member, I would be very appreciative. One of Texas's worst coal power plants is being, well, it's being canceled. A coal plant in South Texas will shut down. And on the same site, there will be built, this is actually a very common phenomenon now in the US, they shut down, and even in, in Australia as well, shut down coal power plants, and then they convert them to a solar plus battery generation facility with the help of a $1.4 billion grant from the US Department of Agriculture meant to help clean energy while saving rural jobs. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, hang on a minute, Donald Trump just got in, in power now. Trump doesn't seem to mind coal power. This deal's already done, so I think it's a bit too late for Trump to step in and cancel it. If, if he were wanting to do so. This grant will go to San Miguel Electric Cooperative, headquartered in Ant Atascosa County, Texas, south of San Antonio, and it will actually serve 340,000 customers in 47 South Texas counties. A lot of people, right? 340,000. So what is, what is this coal power plant? Why is it so bad? Well, it is actually a lignite-fired coal plant and it's been in operation since 1982. It's in the town of Christine, Texas. That town, as you can imagine, has a very small population. Only 337 people live in that town. And I'm gonna guess that's because most people are smart enough to leave. That town is, well, if you live there, you're gonna get cold dust covering your house, covering yourself, covering your kids. To the people that do live there, please. I mean, this stuff is really bad for you. You're breathing it in the air. So I suggest if you can leave, that coal-fired power plant is one of the dirtiest in Texas and one of the dirtiest in the United States. It's the fourth largest mercury polluter in the States, producing around 12 times as much mercury as it's legally allowed to. 12 times more mercury than it's legally allowed to. So guys, I actually was curious to know what happens if you ingest too much mercury. Well, apparently if inorganic mercury enters your bloodstream, it attacks the kidneys and the brain permanent kidney damage and kidney failure can occur. A large amount in the bloodstream may cause massive blood and fluid loss from diarrhea and kidney failure, leading to death. Uh, sounds like a pretty terrible way to die, if you ask me. Ultimately, the inorganic salts of mercury are corrosive to the skin, the eyes, and the gastrointestinal tract as well. So, I mean, the fact that this stuff is pouring out of this coal power plant is well, pretty shocking. In addition to the massive excess of mercury that this coal power plant produces, it also has two coal ash ponds on the site, which leach into the local water table and have created some of the most contaminated groundwater in the United States. 
Numerous constituents were found in concentrations exceeding relevant thresholds from the outset of monitoring in 2018 in wells both up and downgrading from CCR units. These constituents include arsenic, seven times higher than the maximum contamination level, beryllium, up to 112 times what they're allowed to be, 112 times, boron, up to 28 times its 10-day child health advisory level, cadmium, up to 83 times, cobalt, up to 360 times its default level, Lithium, more than 82 times its default, selenium up to 16 times, and radium up to six times. In other words, if you go near any water, anywhere near this coal power plant, please do not drink it. Otherwise, you'll probably be dead within a day. Now, the craziest thing about this is this coal power plant is putting out 360 times more cobalt than it's allowed to, and that's going into the groundwater system. So what's happening? I mean, this coal power plant fortunately is being shut down. Well, a huge solar power plant is being built on the site and then a battery will connect that to the grid as well. 5,000 jobs will be created and apparently climate pollution will be reduced by 11 million tons per year, according to the USDA. The grant will reduce climate pollution by 1.8 million tons and it will remove the equivalent of 446,000 cars from the road and support around 600 jobs. This is the equivalent of removing nearly half a million polluting cars off the road. The grant money will be used to convert the plant away from coal power and replace it with solar and battery storage. And as you can imagine, this is a pretty, a pretty good decision in Texas where there is a hell of a lot of sun. One of the reasons why these sort of plants are built in these locations is because the grid is already supported there. So you already have this massive grid connection, which is going to the coal power plant. You can just join up this new power plant, this new renewable power plant to the grid directly from that site. So you don't have to build new transmission lines. Now, here's the thing though. You probably think, well, it's renewables. It's going to produce less electricity than the coal power plant, but that's not actually the case. The current coal power plant can produce up to a theoretical maximum of 410 megawatts of power. But the solar plant will be capable of 600 megawatts of power, significantly more than the theoretical maximum of 410 of the coal power plant. Now, the great thing about all of this is the fact that the batteries will act as essentially a peaker plant. So what that means is that when people in Texas get home from work, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., they turn their air conditioners on, and there's this huge surge in the use of electricity, the battery will be able to jump into action during those periods of time and provide a huge amount of power within a short space of time. Now, the truth is people usually don't run their air conditioners all night, but if they do, there is less energy, a lot less energy needed once the sun goes down and when things start to cool off. You get your house cool and then the air, the air conditioners use a lot less energy. So after around 10 p.m. in the evenings, the use of electricity in Texas drastically falls. What that means is a battery is perfect. The battery will provide all the energy that's needed for the half a million people between 6 to 10 p.m. And then, and then essentially back when the sun comes up, up in the morning, 6, 7, 8 p.m., it'll recharge that battery pack and they'll be ready to go. So getting rid of peaker plants is extremely important and it actually enormously reduces the cost of electricity. Electricity is most expensive between 6 to 10 p.m., but this will help the cost of electricity to actually go down. Unfortunately, though, even after this power plant, this coal power plant is shut down, Texas will still have 14 coal power plants. In 2023, Texas generated 71 gigawatt hours of electricity from coal, down, though, from a peak of 157 gigawatt hours in 2011. Electricity generation in the state was 37% coal in 2000, but it was only 13% in 2023. That means that coal power has declined enormously. I mean, 37% of the entire grid is now down to 13%. That number, though, will fall to around 10% in 2027, meaning that Texas is very likely to actually completely move from coal power to renewables over the next 10 years. Let me know your thoughts in the comments.